I guess welcome everyone. So this is our first crypto seminar. And I, I maybe I can say a few words about it. It's kind of, you know, informal and casual. If you want to invite a speaker, you can let Ke know, or if you want to like help co-organize it, you can you can also email Ke. And this seminar is actually open to the public and it's right now on this open crypto calendar that Ron Cohen is maintaining. And so we can potentially have outside, outside attendees as well. Uh, I mean, I guess part of it is like to create a, um, an avenue for like, you know, for us to kind of um, mingle and potentially um, have opportunities for cross fertilization, right? So we, we have um, a pretty uh, significant uh, security and crypto presence at CMU. Um, so I, I think I'll just leave it at that. And maybe Kirk, can you introduce the speaker? So today we have Ival Degen as our speaker. He is a PhD student at MIT, and he is interested in um, learning theory and complexity. His recent work mainly focused on learning with computational constraints. And today he's going to talk about his work, a founding noise mechanism for differential privacy. Let's welcome Ival. Thanks a lot. Uh, one sec. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is a joint work with uh, Gil Kuh, which is also a student uh, of uh, MIT. Uh, and uh, the title is Bounded Noise Mechanism for Differential Privacy. Uh, so let me start by uh, defining uh, what uh, differential privacy is and give a motivation. Uh, I guess, uh, is everyone familiar with differential privacy or maybe I should, I should give some uh, definitions. Okay. Yeah, so, that okay. would be helpful. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so differential privacy is a model that uh, uh, was constructed to handle the scenario where you have a data set and the data set contains uh, information of people. It contains uh, private information, uh, but you want to publish uh, statistics about this data to the public. Uh, for example, uh, what is uh, the probability of the, a person to uh, have some uh, sickness or anything that involves private information, uh, but you want to publish uh, statistics about it, and uh, you want the statistics to avoid uh, leaking private information about the uh, specific users. So, um, so there might be some adversary that will try to, from these statistics, will try to get private information uh, on some people, uh, and we want to uh, we want to avoid this uh, scenario. And in this talk, we focus about uh, the central model uh, of differential privacy. And this is maybe the most uh, studied uh, model. And here we assume that there is some trusted entity that has uh, access uh, to the data set. It has full access. And this trusted entity uh, will uh, be the one that publishes uh, statistics about the data. So it will receive some queries about the data set and then it will publish statistics. And these statistics uh, should uh, be carefully chosen such that uh, to not uh, leak significant uh, private information. Um, so uh, in order to get closer to the definition of differential privacy, so here again, we have uh, the scenario that we have users and each of them is holding some uh, a private, uh, private uh, item. And uh, the trusted entity uh, has information on all these items and then it outputs uh, some, uh, it outputs some statistics uh, based on this, uh, this, uh, these items. And uh, let's look at the scenario that, uh, we have the same data set, but now uh, one of the users holds a different item. 
For example, uh, the third user will hold an orange instead of a pineapple. And we look at these two scenarios uh, and at the outputs uh, generated. And uh, we want it to be, uh, we want these two scenarios to be uh, indistinguishable nearly to the adversary. Uh, because if they were distinguishable, then the adversary could have perhaps some information about the input of this user. Uh, so uh, we want that uh, these two data sets where you change just one input uh, will produce roughly the same, uh, same outputs. And now uh, let's uh, get to the definition of uh, differential privacy. So uh, uh, in the differential privacy, so we have a mechanism. A mechanism is some algorithm that receives uh, uh, some n, uh, n inputs, uh, inputs from x to the n, and outputs, for instance, a real number. And we say that it is epsilon differentially private, where epsilon is a parameter, if for every two data sets that differ only in one entry, uh, the, uh, uh, the, output, the output is nearly indistinguishable. And what do you mean by indistinguishable output? So first of all, uh, the output uh, would be randomized. Uh, it must be randomized. And we want that the two uh, PDFs of uh, the output uh, will be indistinguishable in the sense that uh, the probability to output every uh, output y given uh, the left uh, data set, given uh, the first data set, uh, and the probability given the second data set, uh, these are very close and the ratio is bounded by e to the epsilon, which is uh, roughly uh, one uh, plus epsilon. Um, so, okay, so uh, let me know if you have uh, any questions about, about this uh, definition uh, and otherwise we will continue. I had a quick question. Um, what kind uh, of queries are permissible and which ones aren't? What kind of queries? queries? Mm -hmm. um, ah, you mean, uh, you, uh, you can ask uh, any query. Uh, but uh, we want the output of the query to satisfy this, uh, this property. Okay. So, and every, yeah, so as long as the trusted entity uh, will uh, satisfy this property or this privacy property, then, then you, are, you are fine. Okay. And yeah. I guess uh, yeah, I, just I guess. a small comment. Yeah. Maybe you don't only expect aggregate statistic type of queries. Like this definition prevents you from asking like whether person one in this database eat apple and still have accuracy. Like, you should not pick out individual and ask like specific question about these individuals. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so if you ask a, a question about a specific individual, then uh, uh, you cannot uh, answer it uh, within a mechanism that satisfies uh, this definition, because uh, this mechanism has to be insensitive to uh, individual uh, inputs. And yeah, and whenever uh, you can answer it appropriately, then that's a valid, valid question. Uh, so now uh, let's uh, look at, uh, so, so we, we said that this mechanism is, uh, is randomized and, and here uh, I plot here two uh, PDFs of uh, the output of the mechanisms given two different uh, data sets. So uh, for example, we have data set S and S prime that differ in one entry. And here we have uh, the, the probability to output, uh, uh, the red plot is the probability to output uh, 
a, a, sp a specific out to give a specific output uh, given uh, the red data set and the green is given uh, the green, green data set. And we see that uh, the probability to output any specific point uh, uh, given uh, the first data set and the second data set, the ratio, the, these probabilities are very small. Uh, so therefore, uh, and if uh, this property holds for every two uh, neighboring data sets, then uh, we have uh, differential privacy. So, okay, so that was uh, for the definition of uh, differential privacy. And now uh, let's move to the outline of the talk. Uh, so first uh, we'll discuss about a mechanism that output a one, one uh, statistic and then a mechanism that output multiple statistics. And this would be an overview of prior work. And then uh, I'll give uh, the result of, of, of this paper, uh, which gives an improved algorithm for answering multiple statistics. And then uh, some proof idea, uh, if we have time. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, so, so let's move to, uh, answering one query. And in fact, uh, we'll talk about the simplest type of query and that's a counting query. So here each data point is just a number between zero and one. And the goal is to approximately uh, output the sum of all x, x i's. Uh, but uh, you cannot output the exact sum because the exact sum is very sensitive to, to a specific uh, input. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, the adversary will ask, what is the sum of everyone? And what is the sum of everyone except uh, Donald Trump? Then given these two uh, queries, uh, they will be able to uh, infer uh, the, the exact uh, value of, of Trump. Or, or anyone else. Uh, so, so, uh, so we cannot answer exactly the sum. Uh, so in order to make it private, we add some random noise. And the final output will be the sum of xi plus uh, some noise. And now let's uh, look at the actually the simplest uh, noise that uh, people add. And that, that is the uh, Laplace noise. And this is just uh, like uh, an exponential random variable that can also get uh, negative values. And it has some parameter lambda where lambda is just the average magnitude of, of this uh, noise. So we will just uh, output the sum plus, plus the noise. And uh, let's uh, look at an example of a mechanism that uh, adds this noise. So here we have, again, we have two neighboring data sets, one uh, with me sum of xi equals 15 and the other with uh, 16. And uh, here we see the PDF of the output given the noise. So we see that it is centered around the actual uh, sum and it has some noise and you see that uh, it satisfies the differential privacy uh, for the same reason that we discussed uh, before. So uh, let's look at the formal guarantees of this algorithm. So we have that this uh, mechanism is uh, epsilon differentially private if the noise that you add is of magnitude uh, roughly one over epsilon. Uh, so, uh, so this means that the magnitude of error is going to be roughly one over epsilon. And if the data set is large enough, maybe the data set can be uh, one million, uh, data set size can be one million. So the one over epsilon noise that you add will be uh, rough, uh, quite uh, negligible. Uh, so any questions about, uh, about this uh, mechanism. Okay, 
so oh, I have yeah. a quick, quick question. Um, I'm still don't have any intuition for why uh, n is not a function of the size of the data set. Wouldn't like, if you have a very uh -huh. large data set, then changing one bit shouldn't matter at all, right? A very small one, and it does matter a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, so you want uh, the output to be sensitive to an additive change change of, of one, right? Uh, so yeah. uh, um, because okay, if if we would be interested in the average. Mm -hmm. then uh, the noise would be of a magnitude one over epsilon n. Uh, but uh, because I just said, okay, let's output the sum, not the average, mm -hmm. then uh, the noise doesn't depend on n. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're interested in the average, then yeah, uh, then you can, you scale everything down by, by n. I see. Then the noise would be magnitude one for epsilon n, and then you see that it gets to zero as uh, the data set size gets to infinity. Okay. Okay. When epsilon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so 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 that was about uh, the definition of of. Uh, uh, sorry, we discussed now uh, differential privacy. And uh, the definition that I gave you is actually called a pure differential privacy. Uh, and this definition is quite restrictive and there is a slightly uh, more relaxed definition that we will need in this talk, which is epsilon delta approximate uh, differential privacy. And in this model, instead of wanting the PDF uh, to have a bounded ratio for all uh, values, so here we want that with high probability, kind of like with high probability, uh, the two uh, the PDFs uh, will have a bounded uh, ratio, uh, like with probability one minus delta, and uh, the formal definition requires that for each subset of the possible outputs and for any two data sets that differ in one entry uh, the probability to uh, output uh, that the output lies in this set uh, given uh, the first data set is bounded by e to the epsilon times the probability that the output lies in this set given the second data set s prime plus delta. So, so delta is kind of like a, a, a relaxing parameter. And, and if you get delta equal zero, then you have uh, the previous definition uh, of uh, pure privacy. Uh, but here uh, we use the uh, delta, delta privacy. Mm. Uh, by the way, uh, feel free to, to stop me at, at any point. Uh, so, so now uh, let's, uh, now that I discussed uh, answering uh, one statistic, uh, we can move to answering uh, multiple statistics. Uh, so actually this is a similar scenario uh, that you have some, uh, you get some uh, K uh, queries uh, to compute some functions of the data set and uh, you get them uh, here in, in parallel and uh, you want to answer all queries and you want that uh, every uh, adversary that has access to all the queries will still not be able to infer much about, uh, about any user. So uh, we want that the, all, all, the, all the outputs uh, together uh, will, will not uh, will not leak uh, significant information. Uh, so here we have a simple definition of, of differential privacy. So we have we say that a protocol that outputs k different uh, outputs satisfy epsilon delta differential privacy if uh, for any subset of uh, now any subset of r to the k the probability 
And for any two data sets that differ on one entry, the probability that the output lies in this set given the first data set is bounded by e to the epsilon times probability given the second data set plus uh, delta. Uh, so, so now that we defined uh, uh, yeah, epsilon and delta for multiple queries, uh, we can ask the following question. So let's say that you have uh, mechanisms for each query separately. So can you have a mechanism that answers all the queries and satisfy jointly uh, the differential privacy uh, guarantee? And actually, perhaps uh, this is uh, the most uh, natural way way to, to do it is just to execute all of these mechanisms using uh, independent uh, randomness. So right, each mechanism is, is randomized. So uh, in order to answer all the queries, you just uh, answer all of them uh, with independent randomness. And now there are two, two guarantees about it. Uh, so first for the pure classical privacy setting, uh, we see that if each mechanism is epsilon private, then uh, answering all of them independently is epsilon times k private. And this actually falls from a very simple proof, uh, just one line proof. Uh, and uh, so you lose a factor of k in the privacy because you answer k queries. And in the approximate uh, privacy, actually, you only lose a factor of square root k. So here, if you have a k a mechanism that are uh, epsilon delta private and you execute them independently, then uh, the output will be uh, roughly epsilon square root k private. And there is some uh, dependency on delta that uh, doesn't really matter for now. Uh, so yeah, so you lose the factor of square root k by executing k different uh, mechanisms. I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you mean by outputs independent copies of these mechanisms? Uh, so, so each mechanism uh, uh, consists of some randomized process. For example, you add a random uh, noise right to, to the sum. Uh, and so, so in this case, uh, outputting independent uh, uh, copies of this mechanism means that you uh, add uh, independent noise to each of these uh, to each of the subs. That makes sense. Uh, so, so that's exactly what uh, the next slide is about. Oh, uh, actually, I still had a question about the previous yeah. slide. Um, so it looks like your slack factor um, is still being changed by uh, k factor. Is that undesirable or is that OK? So you have yeah. like delta prime plus k delta, right? Ah, the delta, okay, yeah, so so delta, actually, uh, I didn't say that before, but uh, delta is a very, very small factor, like oh. uh, sub-polynomial. So, so okay. if you multiply it by k, then it, uh, but it, yeah, it, it's required, and uh, it doesn't, it's not really, doesn't matter much, because delta is really very small. Mm. Uh, epsilon will be larger. I mean, you cannot get epsilon too small uh, and give meaningful uh, information. So are, yeah. So, are you yeah. assuming anything about the number of of queries? Like, is k sub polynomial? Uh, k is yeah. So, so if k is really really large, then. Uh, then uh, you have a different bound, like uh, so. Instead of epsilon square root k, you get uh, actually I don't remember exactly, but uh, you get something larger. If if epsilon square root k is greater than one, then then you have something uh, larger. Uh, sorry, I just meant in in the results that you're going to present. Are you assuming anything about k? 
about K. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah. I guess the advanced composition might depend on, I think it requires a total epsilon to be less than one or something in your theorem too. If you use theorem two, maybe you, you do have some bounds. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you have, you need epsilon times, uh, I think epsilon times square root K to be less than one, uh, if I remember correctly. So, so yeah, so if the privacy, uh, if uh, it goes above one, then, uh, it's not uh, correct anymore. Uh, I don't remember exactly, actually. So you're saying the sum of epsilon is less than one. OK. Uh, I, I think, uh, OK, I, I don't know exactly. But uh, for our setting, uh, that's, that's what you have. I think what you said sounds right. OK. OK. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so, so now let's move to uh, answering multiple uh, counting queries. So uh, you have uh, K, uh, uh, so, so now uh, each, each uh, person will hold uh, K features. For example, height, salary, age, etc. And uh, you want to uh, output uh, the sums or maybe the averages of all of these uh, statistics. Uh, and you want the combined mechanism to be uh, differentially private. So here, what you will do, uh, you will answer each of these uh, K sum queries uh, independently with privacy parameter epsilon divided by square root K. Uh, and that's because uh, you get the square root K blow up uh, while combining all of them. So, so if you answer multiple queries, uh, you need uh, each query uh, to be more private uh, in order for the complete information on the query uh, to be, uh, on the queries uh, to be epsilon delta private. And uh, in particular, uh, the algorithm, if we use the same uh, Laplace mechanism, then uh, we will just uh, compute the sum vector. And then we add uh, independent uh, uh, noise to each coordinate. And each noise will now uh, be, each, each noise entry will be of roughly, of magnitude roughly uh, square root K over, over epsilon rather than one over epsilon. Uh, yeah, and if we uh, do the average instead of the sum, then we have uh, over n in the noise. And this is actually tight uh, by Stanek and Ullman. And uh, so, so, so this is actually a tight mechanism for answering uh, multiple queries. And uh, but uh, we will not uh, be satisfied with that. Uh, and why? Uh, because we answer, uh, we answer K queries. And each of these K query has a noise of magnitude roughly square root K over epsilon, but uh, it, the noise density is unbounded. So some of the queries uh, will have larger noise. So their noise will actually be larger by uh, the noise of th the maximum noise will be a log K factor greater than uh, the, the average noise. Uh, but let's say we want to answer all the queries uh, up to a uh, good uh, accuracy, then uh, we're not uh, satisfied uh, with this uh, logarithmic uh, factor. And <laughs> that's actually what uh, the talk is about, uh, how, how to get uh, remove, how to remove the logarithmic factor of the maxima, maxima uh, noise. So, so yeah, so let me repeat uh, the issue. The issue is that uh, uh, the maximal uh, noise is larger by a uh, low k uh, factor than uh, 
the average noise, and we actually want all the noises to to be of uh, the same, uh, of like a good good factor. Uh, so, so so let's see an uh, improvement over this uh, low k low k uh, factor. So uh, if we replace the Laplace noise with a Gaussian noise, then uh, the maximal noise will now be a squared low k factor uh, uh, off. And that's because uh, the Gaussian random variable is more concentrated than the uh, Laplace random variable. And, and further, uh, Steinke and Ullmann constructed uh, a mechanism that actually re reduced the log to a uh, log log. And uh, this is, and they had a two step uh, algorithm. So they first uh, added an independent Gaussian noise to each entry. And then uh, they corrected uh, the largest uh, noise entries using a uh, another private algorithm that is called uh, the sparse vector algorithm. And, and then uh, re more recently, uh, so the square root log log factor that you get for the largest noise was uh, replaced with square root log 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 by uh, replacing uh, the Gaussian noise with a uh, generalized Gaussian noise that is more concentrated than the Gaussian. And uh, then uh, the maximal uh, noise will even be, uh, will even be uh, lower. And yeah. Sorry, Sorry I was spacing out a little. Do you mind going back to the previous slide again? Uh, oh, I was yeah, just trying sorry. to see. Okay, yeah. So, so the naive one is just add Laplace in noise. Yeah, to to each coordinate independently. Uh, and that this this one the, the the square root k over epsilon times log k okay, that's for the naive scheme of just adding Laplace in noise. Yeah, that's for the maximum noise. So you you add for each coordinate you add uh, Laplace noise. Mm -hmm. And now the maximal uh, noise will be uh, roughly. Uh, log k are more than the average noise uh, uh -huh. because uh, it has some tail and the tail, so if you hit many independent samples, then one, some of them will be uh, larger than, than the average. And the maximum noise will be log k uh, higher than the average noise. Is there, what's the failure probability like for, for this? Expression like this. This is expected. Is it expected noise or like oh, with some yeah, probability? Yeah. You can say expected maximum. Yeah, the expected maximum would be a uh, low k time larger. Uh, mm -hmm. I I had a very basic question. Uh, what is the motivation behind bonding the maximal noise? Um, I mean, uh, so for example, if you want to answer all the queries correctly. That's one motivation. And another motivation is, uh, let's say uh, you have differentially private mechanism that, you know, they ask many, many queries, uh, and maybe even in adaptive fashion, uh, although we're not talking about adaptive here. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you want, in order to get your guarantee, you need all the noise to be bounded, for example. Uh, by by some some quantity. Um, aren't we trying to um, bound the leakage of information, not the noise? So uh, you want to this noise to be bounded uh, uh, and still uh, satisfy epsilon delta uh, differential privacy. I see. Okay. Uh, so you want to bound the maximum noise and still satisfy epsilon delta differential privacy. Uh, so yeah, any other questions? Okay, can you flip to the yeah. next slide again now? Yeah. 
So, uh, yes, so now uh, if you uh, uh, replace the Laplace noise with a Gaussian noise, then you get uh, better. Uh, the noise is better concentrated, so the maximal noise will uh, will be smaller. Will be only a square root log k, and uh, then uh, a further algorithm uh, reduce the maximal noise to square root log log k, and, and this is by a two-step algorithm that first added the Gaussian noise and then it corrected uh, the uh, worst uh, noise coordinates. And uh, lastly, there was another uh, algorithm uh, that had uh, log, 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 square root log, log, log. And, and this replaced the Gaussian with a generalized Gaussian noise, which is more concentrated than the Gaussian. Uh, uh, any questions about, uh, about that? Okay, uh, uh, so, so now this, uh, this uh, work uh, removes completely the uh, log, 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 in, log, log, logs, uh, and it achieves a square root k over epsilon. And you also have a, a square root uh, log one over there, which I just, uh, I just hid in, in the previous slide, but it appeared in all of the previous, uh, previous uh, works too. And, and this is also uh, tight. And in fact, uh, it was also proven by, by a group from uh, Google Research. And they just published this paper uh, like one week after that we published it. Uh, so uh, they, they also uh, published this, uh, proved this uh, using a different uh, algorithm. And I just want to say that uh, this works for most uh, values of delta, but there is a small range of delta where, where this uh, doesn't work. Uh, so, so that's the algorithm and uh, that's the result, yeah. So which work requires a large delta? Uh, 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 this work uh, requires uh, yeah, this value of delta. Uh, but their work, your work doesn't. No, our work does require, and their work uh, doesn't require. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Can I also ask you? So, a lot of the times, we actually want the, the tail behavior. We, we want to. We not on, only want the expectation of the noise. We want to say like this. This error is like let's say some of some magnitude with some high probability. Yeah. So, can you also give um, like a tighter characterization for this, the tail bound or is it just for the expectation? Uh, so, so this specifically bounds the uh, worst case noise. So it's, uh, it just uh, bounded, uh, it's always bounded by, by this case uh, with probability so This one. is like the, expect, the expectation of the, the worst case, the, the maximum error for all these uh, it, it's, it's the maximum, it's, it's not uh, the expectation. It's just- uh, uh, I think it's the question is about like whether the pro it's a probability expectation or like it's the probability like one over beta, one minus beta, you have this bound. Oh, uh, you always so take the worst case error, yes. Uh, oh, so this is with probability one. Um, this is with probability one. Uh, uh, how is that possible? Oh, probability one? Be uh, because- uh, do, you, do you mean you, you chop off the error at some maximum, like the noise has to be chopped off at some bounded magnitude for, the, for this to be with probability one, right? Yeah, so uh, what you do, uh, you add the bounded noise uh, in each coordinate. Um, you just, uh, I see. you draw the noise from some uh, bounded support uh, distribution, and then it can always be bounded uh, by, it, it will always be bounded because, because it's uh, just bounded. I see. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, okay, so, uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, um, yeah, so the algorithm uh, is adding uh, uh, in, in independent uh, noise, like the 
Laplace, but instead of Laplace, you use a different uh, a noise, uh, and and the density kind of looks like like what you see in this plot, and it's also written uh, here in, on this slide. Uh, and uh, the density decays very fast as you approach R. As you approach some uh, R, where R is just a bound on the noise, and uh, so uh, you have a constant probability to be R over two, for example, but uh, then when you approach R, you decay, you decay uh, very fast. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's, that, that's how uh, the noise uh, looks like. And you just uh, add uh, independently to each coordinate. Uh, so, so that's the algorithm. Uh, by the way, so how much time do I have left? Um, roughly 20 minutes. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so, so we'll even uh, do it. Uh, it will even end uh, before that. So, and uh, that's so okay. So, so, so that's uh, the algorithm, and yeah, and uh, okay. Any questions about uh, about this? So you just add noise from this distribution. Do you need to do like the sparse vector technique, like the other papers? Uh, no, no. So the sparse vector, uh, its goal was to remove uh, the largest uh, noise uh, uh, entries, but uh, now the noise is, is always bounded, so you don't you don't need it. I see. Okay. So. Uh, so now let's just uh, before going to uh, discuss proof details. Uh, so let's talk about. Uh, uh, so I just want to say that uh, this uh, is not and this and all 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 the results that I uh, talked about uh, before. They don't only hold for uh, counting queries for for uh, computing the sum. Uh, they uh, actually really trivially hold uh, for any query. That has a bounded uh, sensitivity. So, what do we mean by that? We mean that uh, changing one input can change the output by uh, some, say, at most one. And uh, any uh, query, even nonlinear, that uh, satisfies this uh, bounded sensitivity uh, can be replaced. Uh, with, uh, I mean, we can use it instead of the county query and uh, have the same, same result. Uh, so yeah, so, so now uh, I can move uh, to uh, the proof idea. And first let's discuss uh, the the plus mechanism uh, with uh, just one uh, one counting query. So here we add a noise, of, and the density is roughly e to the minus epsilon times uh, the absolute value of of eta. And we want to show we want to show that for any two uh, neighboring data sets and any uh, y, the probability to output y as uh, the ratio between the probability to output y given the first and second data set is bounded by e to the epsilon. And you see here the same, uh, the same plot uh, drawing the probability densities of uh, these uh, two mechanisms given s and f prime. And, and you see that these two mechanisms are just uh, obtained from the noise, uh, sorry, we see, you see that these two uh, probability density functions are obtained from the PDF of the noise by just uh, shifting it. Uh, and we shift it such that uh, the, uh, it is centered around uh, the true statistic. So we actually just want to uh, compare between two uh, shifted uh, 
two shifted uh, PDFs of, of the noise. And in fact, what we want to show is that for every uh, eta uh, in R and every uh, offset X between minus one and one, the ratio between the density at eta and the density at eta plus X is bounded by E to the epsilon. So the ratio between two shifts is bounded by E to the epsilon. And uh, here in the last uh, line, we have a simple calculation that show that indeed uh, this ratio is bounded by E to the epsilon uh, when you use uh, the Laplace noise. And actually the Laplace noise is the uh, actually most uh, uh, natural noise for, for uh, epsilon uh, differential privacy. Uh, so, so, so that's uh, for, for the Laplace mechanism. Uh, any questions about that? Okay, so let's move to uh, the uh, mechanism that is used uh, in this work. So, so here again, you want to compare two shifted variants of, of uh, the uh, PDF of the noise. And you want to bound the ratio uh, P of eta over P of eta plus X. And here, because you are interested in uh, epsilon delta approximate privacy, you don't need to bound uh, the ratio for all eta. Uh, you just need to have uh, bound it with probability one minus delta over, over eta. So uh, as you can see uh, around, the, around the peak, the ratio is small. And when you get uh, to, to the margin, uh, the ratio can be uh, very, very large. At some point, it even becomes uh, infinity. Uh, but you don't care about these points because you just want a high probability ratio bounded by e to the epsilon. So uh, we have this so uh, range. Yeah. What do you mean by with probability one over delta over eta? Are you sampling at eta at random? Yeah. You're sampling eta from the noise density. And you want that with probability one minus delta over this eta, it holds uh, that P of eta over P of eta plus X is bounded by E to the epsilon. Oh, X is the fix. X is yeah, in, X, oh, I see. Yeah, X is fixed ahead of time. X is the offset uh, between the two uh, data sets. So this is fixed. And then given X, yeah, you have this probability. Is this distribution, there are other distribution that satisfy uh, this sort of property, right? I think Gaussian sort of also have similar property. Is, is there anything specific about your choice of distribution? Uh, so this choice of distribution uh, was just uh, made uh, so it has to satisfy uh, two, two properties. So first of all, uh, you want to satisfy uh, this property. And secondly, you want it to be bounded. Uh, and yeah, we kind of tried to find uh, the best way to, to, to bound the ratio with the mm -hmm. highest probability that possible. OK. Uh, so yeah, so I would just also say that uh, if you are interested in the delta equal zero regime, then actually the best thing you can do is the uh, Laplace noise. Uh, you cannot have bounded noise uh, for, for the pure privacy. Mm -hmm. For the delta equal zero, bounded will not work and even Gaussian will not work. Uh, you must have uh, Laplace. Yeah. But when you have the delta, you can even do bounded. Uh, and, and this would uh, work. Okay, so you want to yeah, you want to bound uh, the ratio by e to the epsilon. And actually, uh, we can simplify it by taking a log. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, question? 
Okay. Uh, so you have uh, log p of eta minus log p of eta plus x. We want this to be bounded by epsilon. And this is just as a difference of the function at two uh, close nearby uh, points. So we can uh, just uh, approximate it using uh, a Taylor, uh, using the just uh, the first order Taylor uh, series. And then we want uh, uh, it suffices to bound the derivative at at uh, eta in absolute value by, by epsilon. Uh, so in fact, we want to bound the derivative times x by epsilon. And we also have an error term that corresponds to, to the second uh, derivative that uh, I didn't uh, put in this uh, slide. So if we can show that the derivative of the log probability is small, with high probability over eta, then uh, we are good for k equals one. Uh, any questions? Okay, so now uh, let's move to, ah, sorry. And, and, and now here I, I plot uh, the derivative of, of the uh, log uh, probability. And you see that uh, at around zero, the derivative is small. And when you go to the margins, when you go towards plus minus uh, r, where r is the uh, bound, uh, the derivative explodes. And this actually uh, must happen uh, when, you have, uh, when you have a bounded uh, density uh, random variable. Uh, this must happen, but you don't care about uh, about uh, uh, the points uh, close to the margin, uh, close to uh, plus minus r, because uh, they don't happen with high probability. So with high probability, uh, the derivative uh, of the log density is small. Uh, so, uh, so that's for the, uh, one, uh, one query. And now let's move to answering uh, multiple queries. Uh, so uh, here uh, we have a high dimensional uh, setting and we have that uh, for every uh, offset. Now each offset contains K numbers between plus minus one. So for every offset, we want that with high probability over the high dimensional eta, which is just a, a product uh, independent uh, noise. One with high probability over eta that p of eta is bounded by e to the epsilon times p of eta plus x. And because it's an independent noise, we have one that the product of p of eta i is bounded by e to the epsilon product of p of eta i plus x i. And if we uh, again take a logarithm, logarithm and do a Taylor approximation, we actually want that sum over i of xi times the derivative of p of eta i uh, is bounded by, by epsilon. And this is with high probability over uh, independent samples of eta. Yeah, uh, let me know if, uh, if this is uh, clear. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. A any questions about it? Or? Okay. So we, you, so uh, we want to show that with high probability over the choice of eta, we have this weighted sum of uh, uh, derivative logs bounded by epsilon. And this is uh, proved using uh, concentration inequality. So uh, the derivative of the log P of eta, we just uh, call it some uh, random variable uh, zi. 
And our goal is to bound the weighted sum of the i by epsilon uh, with probability one minus delta. And, and this we do uh, using a, a concentration inequality. So uh, in order to prove this concentration inequality, we first need that each uh, zi concentrates. And now the zi's are uh, independent uh, random variables. So we can use a concentration inequality for independent random variables to, to get uh, this uh, combined uh, inequality. Uh, so, so, so that's it uh, for, for the proof of uh, k greater than one. Yeah, okay. So the only place delta show up here is the concentration, like you, because the noise is bounded. So they're like, uh, you don't have the, the usual tail bound for bounding in individual tail from the noise. So the only randomness is like the concentration, right? Yes, so delta is the concentration. And if you want larger delta, then you will add more noise. So this will hold with higher probability. So it's, um, is this the place where you have to have uh, delta to be not too small, like this concentration inequality? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, the concentration inequality uh, utilizes, uh, yeah, the fact that you, uh, you look at a uh, sum of many independent random variables. And the more uh, random variable that you have, the better, more you gain uh, from, from uh, because the concentration of the sum is better than the concentration of a single uh, random variable in this case. Uh, so like, yeah, so like kind of like uh, the, you have, uh, each random variable can have a heavy tail, but then if you look at uh, the, the sum, then uh, you have a central limit theorem, kind of. So the sum is converting to a Gaussian random variable. Uh, so th this, so if uh, k is not large enough uh, compared to delta, then you won't have uh, you won't have this uh, behavior. Uh, like. Um, so uh, for any fixed delta, you have a very fixed K, uh, the, this behavior is just, uh, uh, you get it only if delta is uh, sufficiently uh, small. And when delta is larger, then you get, you don't get square root log one over delta, you get something worse. I, yeah. I guess I also have a couple of questions. Yeah. So when is like this this yarn mechanism also does this bound also for um, hold for let's say adaptive adaptively making k queries over the, some database? Uh, so yeah, actually yeah, I haven't thought about it, uh, but I mean uh, I think it it should uh, hold. Uh, I mean yeah. Are you about... saying advanced composition? So, uh, well, yeah, but adaptive just means the next query can depend on the result of the previous query. I mean, a, a lot of these um, composition theorems hold, yeah. should hold for adaptive. So like, I just want to check for this, this case, whether it holds. So uh, I think it should hold. Uh... Okay. I don't see a reason why, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I haven't looked at uh, the adaptive setting. Yeah. So also like how much does it matter in practice? Like let's say the previous um, mechanism, let's say the worst case is like log n factor worse, but maybe it, it doesn't hit the worst case very often, maybe only very, very rarely. So like how much probability mass are we talking about? Like what's the difference like th that it lies in, in this different uh, difference region? Uh, okay, so- Let, Let's uh, say I just apply the existing, the most naive mechanism, I guess is just like 
um, la plage, la plage, right? Uh -huh. Add independent yeah. la plage noise to with like um, square root k magnitude. Uh, but that one has an extra log n term in terms of the the maximum error. Extra log Sorry. k. Yeah. No, log k, yeah, log k. So in practice, uh -huh. like, um, you know, uh, let's say I could implement the, the naive scheme or I could implement your scheme. I just like yeah. wonder, uh, you know, how, how much does, does it matter? Like, th does this worst case bound, uh, do we actually care about it and in practice? Because if we don't, like, let's say the Laplace, the naive mechanism, we actually don't hit the worst case very often. Like, it's very, very rarely that we hit the worst case error that maybe I don't care about it that much. Uh, but okay, I guess it so depends on, Okay, like I mean, yeah. What is the? Uh, okay, so first of all, yeah, in practice, probably like uh, this is not optimized. So I guess. Uh, so maybe I guess it depends on how bad the constants are for for your uh, your bounds because you're hiding you're hiding constants. Whereas like Laplace and Gaussian bounds, like the the constants are not terrible. I see. So in practice, yeah. like which one? It's also interesting to see the concrete parameters. Like if this analysis is on high in constant, in practice, it may be still be, be maybe better to use like Laplace, which has. I think Gaussian is uh, should, should be strictly better. I'm guessing uh, because you act like you you basically have the same constant, but you literally shape square root log k. Uh, I'm guessing like you know yeah. in practice Gaussian probably will be strictly better. Um, I see. Yeah. But whether this is like much substantially better than Gaussian, I, I think really depends on how bad the constants are. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, maybe it depends on, also depends on like K, like if you really, really yeah, yeah. don't want um, like the worst case error to exceed. I mean, sometimes like maybe it's not the end of the world if you like query K times and one of them has slightly larger error. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, yeah, more uh, uh, theoretical, but uh, I mean, I hope that uh, it will be possible to like, I don't know, some people will work out uh, exactly the, the constants, uh, maybe optimized constants. And uh, then uh, and then maybe it will be better than, than the Gaussian. If you care for all all the right. Uh, okay, so yeah, so so this is uh, for uh, okay. So, so let me uh, go to the summary and, and open question. So uh, there is an optimal bound for entering uh, multiple queries, and uh, um, and this is a new uh, differential private. See a mechanism that adds uh, about the noise uh, independently, and, and here are some uh, open questions. Maybe uh, see whether uh, you can have bounded noise for adaptive uh, in other differentially private setting where you uh, like replace uh, maybe the Gaussian or the plus or. Uh, in adaptive data analysis uh, uh, that is also used to uh, uh, adaptively uh, get information about, about uh, the data. Uh, uh, that's not, adaptive data analysis is another field that is using tools from, from privacy to, to analyze uh, uh, the data adaptively. Um, so yeah, uh, so these are some open questions, uh, and yeah, uh, any other questions? So, so your result is optimal, right? There's a lower bound on, on this. Yeah, so so, so it is optimal. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a small range of delta uh, between e to the minus k over log to the 8k and e to the minus k. Uh, so in this uh, range, we don't give an optimal bound, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, we give an optimal bound if, if delta is, is, is less than yeah, yeah, e to the minus k over log to the 8k. 
I see. I guess like for meaningful privacy guarantee, you want Delta to be smaller than one over N. Um, so that might pose some bound on K, like maybe the K here has I, to I, be bigger than log N or something. I thought it, the expression was like E to the minus, minus K or K. something. So like K log N is like pretty small, I guess. Yeah. But for constant k, maybe your, your result uh, does not hold, right? Uh, yeah, for k constant equals five, k. and also like the concentration argument maybe doesn't work. Um, yeah, I guess for constant, maybe just the naive composition works pretty well in terms of like, right. You're right. Yeah. So maybe it's not the place to think about this. Yeah. And I think your analysis should just work for adaptive settings. So it should probably just hold for adaptive data analysis as well. Yeah, but you just uh, replace the ID with a margin gain and quality. Maybe. Right. Yeah, that's a very yeah. cool result. Yeah. Thanks. So how did you start working on this problem? Just curious. Oh, so uh, there was a Twitter post that saying uh, there is an, an open problem that uh, whoever solves it gets a sushi worth five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> did you get the money? But you you didn't want to go out to get sushi this time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, so, so this was a joke. So the people that uh, published the open question, they say, we have a sushi, and then they had an asterisk saying, okay, uh, uh, no more than $500, just to make sure. <laughs> 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 but then in the, in the Twitter post, someone else said, okay, okay, they give you $500 to buy sushi. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so. So have you received a paycheck of five hundred dollars, or you just got a lot of rice? Yeah, it's yeah, it's an all you can eat sushi, and there probably you have like so many so much rice. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so it's an all you can eat sushi, and and the good point is that uh, there is another group, uh, and and they solved it at the same time, but. They were uh, one week later to uh, uh, publish to archive. Uh, I mm -hmm. don't know. Maybe they are in this. Uh, talk. I don't know. Uh, so yeah. So uh, if I waited more, then could have uh, lost uh, lost uh, the sushi. <laughs> yeah, you can take a picture of the sushi and you know post it on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe probably. Report back. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for giving this wonderful talk. Thanks. Thanks a lot for it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.